Hi, it's Alaska Granny. Guess what? There are still categories of items that we need to stockpile if we want to make sure that we have the things we need, we can still get them at prices that we can afford. What are some items they're still saying are going to be in short supply in the future that you might want to stockpile? Number one is paper products. I don't know about you, but paper products such as toilet paper are something that I never want to live without. I had a friend even at the beginning of the pandemic that was down to her very last roll and there was none to be had in the store. So how did we come to their rescue? Well, it happened to be her husband's birthday, so we all drove by their house since we weren't allowed to gather together because of the pandemic, and we tossed them rolls of toilet paper. It's probably not the same drive-by TPing that you might have done when you were young, but it certainly helped rescue a friend in need. Paper products also go beyond toilet paper. Maybe you want to make sure that you have Kleenex or paper towels, the products that you use. Take an inventory of what you use in your daily life and then tally up how much you do you have on hand. And those are products that you want to fill in any of your gaps. Paper plates aren't something I use on a daily basis, but in an emergency or if I'm camping out at my Alaska granny camp, which is a dry cabin, I want to have paper plates because not only are they great to say cover something in the microwave so that you save yourself cleaning up things don't explode and splatter you can also put it on top of a plate and use it as a liner then you're able to save water from not having to wash all the dishes having a supply of paper plates is a must-have in my life and so I am trying to make sure that I have plenty and one of the places that perhaps you pick up paper plates is maybe at the Dollar Tree and I don't have a Dollar Tree in Alaska but when I visit the lower 48 guess what they only seem to have the styrofoam plates anymore and it's extremely hard to find paper plates so that gives you an indication that yes paper products might be in short supply or becoming too expensive something we've continued to find in short supply is pet food and it's an ongoing problem we can maybe find some brands, not the brands that perhaps our pets enjoy eating, but sometimes we have to get what we can so that we have food to provide for our pets. And I don't know about you, but what I've noticed is the prices are rising astronomically. Makes me glad I have a little dog because when I was buying a small bag, I saw a woman buying a gigantic bag. The price of feeding her big dog is going to be astronomically more than feeding a little dog and so that's something you really need to budget for if you have large pets they're going to require uh, far more money to continue to feed them and you want to make sure that you budget for that so you can afford to feed your little friends another item in short supply are glass jars perhaps you're into canning or like I am you want to store your dried foods in glass containers Glass containers are an easy way to store smaller amounts of food. Perhaps you don't have a large family and you don't want to immediately go to a five gallon bucket to get beans and rice, mashed potatoes, things like that. Glass jars that you buy or you clean well and fill yourself with foods that are going to last are a great way to put foods away for the longer term. Now, what's nice about them is animals can't chew on them. And not like Mylar bags, they can actually get poke holes in them, they can become torn. And so I like to have smaller amounts of food than in just five gallon buckets that I can go and have a manageable amount of food that I know is in an airtight container that it's going to last. So having glass jars, just that you buy the jars is one thing, but then think about the foods that you buy that come in glass jars. For example, some kinds of salad dressings different kinds of pasta sauces. What about salsas and pizza sauces? Jams, jellies, preserves, pickles, pickle relish. Perhaps you like mushrooms or mustards and lots of honeys come in glass jars. So you want to check over your food stockpile, the foods that you choose to buy, which ones actually come in glass containers. Can you find them in a plastic container or some other container that is going to last in your prepper pantry? And so you need to inventory again. 
what are the items that you have that you want to have in glass containers that you store yourself or you purchase that way and make sure that you're keeping your eye out for those items that you have what you need and you have it put away in your prepper pantry and your food storage stockpile. Load up now if it's something that you're concerned that you don't have enough and you want to have more, now you've been warned. You have the opportunity to get those things. We know there are ongoing conflicts in the world and there are just all kinds of problems with crops and importing and exporting food. And wheat is one of them that is going forward going to be in shorter supply. You can order from something like the LDS Church. I order flour from them. The flour is sealed up to last a long time. You can also buy the wheat berries and those can last nearly forever. I don't necessarily want to store a lot of wheat berries. I do have some because they require you to either sprout them or grind them up or cook them and so it's not something that I eat on a normal basis but I'm willing to eat it in an emergency but if having flour and wheat is a concern pay attention to what you have and what you can find. Think about the products that you use that are made from wheat. Do you like pastas, crackers, cereals, muffin mixes? There's all kinds of food that are made from wheat and that they might be a part of your everyday diet and so you'll want to make sure that you have a supply of those things while food is still readily available and it's affordable. Canned foods, guess what? The cans are getting harder to find for manufacturers and anybody who's shopped for canned goods lately knows that the quality of the can is certainly deteriorating. So it's a good idea to have a variety of canned foods and then make sure that you're rotating them. They're not gonna last forever. Don't let people fool you into having a false sense of security that you can buy canned foods and just put it away forever. That's not how these types of foods will last. Some of them will last far longer, but not all of them. And you don't want to go into your food storage stockpile and find out that your food is spoiled, your cans have leaked, and you don't have something to feed your family. Look for a variety of foods, and if you see something you think you might like, buy one, take it home, and try it. If you like it, you can always go back and get more. Don't load up on something you may end up that you don't like and your family won't eat, then you've wasted not only your prepper pantry storage space, but you've also wasted your precious grocery dollars buying foods that you don't need when you could have spent them on foods that you do want to eat. We know there are food shortages. We know there are shortages of the cans and jars our food comes in. We know there's rising prices and there's just crazy times in the world. So the best thing to do is take this time and add a little at a time to your food storage stockpile. Start with some just grab and go open and eat foods that don't require anything but tear it open and eat it. Then no matter what happens, you can make a meal, you can open and eat something and you can get busy figuring out what to do next. Then stockpile your pantry with canned goods and packaged foods, things that are simple to put together, require a little bit of cooking. You can combine them together to make hearty meals for your family. And then make sure that you're also stockpiling the longest lasting foods, things like beans, rice, pasta, oatmeal, foods that you can put away in an airtight container that they can last for 30 years. Then if you have to evacuate for some reason, you have a grab and go meal. If you're hunkered down in your home for a few weeks, you have a pantry full of foods that you can prepare. And in a long drawn out emergency, you'll have the longest lasting food so you can continue to feed your family even in times of hardship. And that's what we want, to be able to take care of ourselves and our family. So these are some things that you might want to get now because shortages are ahead. Another great tip from Alaska Granny is to try to find some like-minded people. It's more important than ever that we know who we can trust, who can we count on, who has our back, and who should know that they could count on us. We want to develop a community of people that work together to get through the rough times that seem to be coming ahead. And then do the best you can. Every day should be the best. And if you have some supplies and a positive attitude, it's probably going to be. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.